the people's platform Moni Mohsin is an author and journalist born and raised in Pakistan living between London and Lahore She began her journalistic career at the Friday Times Pakistan's first weekly newspaper where she started a long running satirical column The Diary of a Social Butterfly Now working as a freelancer she writes on culture politics lifestyle class and society Her journalism has appeared in The Guardian The Times of India 1843 Vogue The Nation and Prospect Moni Mohsin has written five works of fiction three novels The End of Innocence The Impeccable Integrity of Ruby R and Tender books aka duty free and two books of collected butterfly columns the diary of a social butterfly and the return of the butterfly she also hosts a comic podcast called browned off with editor and critic faiza khan in which they lift the lid on diversity or the lack thereof in contemporary western culture Good evening and welcome. My next guest is British Pakistani writer Moni Mohsin, famously the columnist of The Diary of a Social Butterfly. Good evening and welcome. Thank you. Um you're a journalist turned fiction writer. How has this transition been like uh, when you're a journalist you're um used to reporting the facts as they are? Um how has the transition been in 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 terms of crafting fictional narratives? So I was always a uh, feature writer when I was a journalist. Um so I was writing about culture and the arts and um uh, society. Um and I um used to tell stories about people. They were always people driven. So that helped me, you know, because I met a lot of people. I learned how to write, how to to describe my encounters, etc. Also while I was a journalist, I started writing the diary of a social butterfly as a newspaper column. So it began as a um a weekly column in a, a, a weekly newspaper and it was about um it was fictional the characters in it were fictional right. um but it, they talked about real events in real time so when i transition to fiction all of that helped me it mm-hmm. kind of I, i'd already done the groundwork almost uh, in the diary of a social butterfly its uh, protagonist is a strong outspoken woman um how is this uh, um not a reflection of pakistani society but how is this a call to pakistani women to be strong to be outspoken so i grew up in a home um uh, with a very empowered mother who empowered my sister and myself as well mm-hmm. she in turn had been empowered by her grandmother who was one of just three sisters so my great grandfather had no sons and he brought up her uh, his daughters like like men to make their own decisions to be to take positions on 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 topics that they felt strongly about so for me it it just didn't make sense to have a character who was not um uh, outspoken etc and in women uh, in pakistan i will say that although women don't have much authority in in many women don't have authority but they do have power butterfly also the the uh, her husband is the head of the house he makes all the big decisions etc but she speaks her mind she's cognizant of his ridiculousness as well um and she is not afraid to point it out the pakistani women that i know are very empowered and very powerful so yes this does resonate um Uh, what what is the role of humor in addressing serious topics um you speak of gender dynamics societal norms cultural norms my brief when i began writing the column from my editor was that he wanted me to deal with serious subjects but with a light hand mm. so i had to think of a way of doing it without lecturing and hectoring and preaching because i so dull and nobody would read it so i came up with this solution of of integrating humor into it or using a humorous voice to raise these issues and you know when you have humor people are more receptive and they are more forgiving mm-hmm. and uh you can slide in the critiques and all the sort of um the the the, the darts etc uh while pretending to be just joking you know and and people read it and then the whole idea of satire is that first you laugh and then you think 
So that helps me. As a British Pakistani writer, um, how do you manage to um, reflect on the intricacies of Pakistani culture, um, honoring the nuances? Um, this is for, for the benefit of readers from within Pakistan and also the Pakistani diaspora across the world. Well, you know, I'm Pakistani diaspora now. Um, I was born in Pakistan. I grew up in Pakistan. I was educated in Pakistan. Um, and then I went for higher education to the UK. Um, then I returned to Pakistan and I lived there for 10 years and I worked in this newspaper that I mentioned, it's called the Friday Times. And um, I got married and, and, and while I was at Friday Times, I started the Diary of a Social Butterfly. Right. So it was already established, I'd already made the characters, I'd already discovered the voice, I'd already found the format. And I'd been doing it for several years before I got married. And then when I got married and moved to London, I just continued in the same vein. And because I go to Pakistan all the time, and I have family visiting all the time, etc. And so it hasn't been difficult to continue in, in the same vein. And because I guess it is um, authentic, the voice is authentic, the issues are current, it resonates with readers, um, diaspora and Pakistani readers at home. Um, when doing my research for this interview, I, I, I read that you host a comic podcast called Round Off about realities surrounding diversity in contemporary Western culture. Speak to us about it. So during COVID, um, you know, we weren't, being, uh, we weren't able to go out very much in, in uh, London. We weren't allowed to meet people. So I have a very dear friend who's an editor. And she and I think the same on many topics. And I said to her, um, she was an editor at Bloomsbury. Her name is Faiza Khan. And I said to her, Faiza, wouldn't it be fun to do a podcast? And she said, well, there are so many podcasts. What can we bring to it? I said, we can bring our Desi voices to it. Mm -hmm. And so we decided to do this podcast, which is about diversity or the lack thereof mm -hmm. in, in Western culture. So for example, they will tell you things like, uh, you know, you, you write to a, uh, an agent and you say that I, um, I'm a you know, Pakistani woman and I want to um, write something and say, well, like, yeah, I would, your work is nice, but I've already got a brown, <laughs> I've already got a brown client, a female wow. brown client. Or somebody will say to you, an editor will say to you, yeah, yeah, your books are fun because they're, they're humorous, etc. But you know, our readers don't like humor from the subcontinent. They want dark, deep stories from the subcontinent. Mm -hmm. This was more true before, nine, uh, before uh, BLM. Uh, Black Lives okay, Matter, okay, okay. Uh, and but now people are afraid of saying those things openly. But it's still, mm -hmm. but there is still that sort of belief and feeling because recently I approached somebody to um, pitch um, Butterfly, you know, in for a television series, and she said, "Yeah, yeah, this is fine. It's great, but you know, we need to have white characters in it. Otherwise, nobody will watch it." Wow. So, <laughs> So that's why we started our podcast mm. because but that has been proven uh, not to be true because of we, course. we've seen um, Mindy Kaling's um, Netflix series but she's, Never Have I Ever with all brown characters. Yes. And it was phenomenal. Yes, yes, but I think, uh, you know, the English public is still behind that and, and, and in, in that view. Sure. Um, so, uh, you know, recently they made um, um, Suitable Boy. Mm. Do you remember seeing that on BBC? Mm. It was all in English. You know, they could have used much more Urdu and Hindi, etc., yeah, to make yeah. it more sort of. Although it had brown characters, S yeah, like, it was. Um, so it sort of uh, tweaked. Yes, yes to uh, be more palatable to the um, white audiences. White audiences. Yes. Mm. Yes. Okay. There was this feeling for a long time that white audiences cannot identify with anybody or anything which is not within their own everyday experience. That is, you know, but... Yeah, but are we simplifying the issue, do you think? I think the tide is turning, mm. and I think more, as more and more content is being made. So, for example, now uh, the white, white audiences are very happy watching French, uh, sorry, British audiences are very happy watching French uh, serials as well. Mm. So there's one called Lupin, there was one called Call My Agent. They were entirely in French, but they watched them and they liked them. They liked and watched a lot of, uh, uh, you know, like Made in Heaven as well. But these are still niche programs. They're basically for the uh, um, diaspora brown people. But again, the diaspora is huge. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, we felt that there was, there was a market and that, you know, these voices need to be honored and treated with the same kind of seriousness that, that 
with other voices as well. Across much of Pakistan, increasingly, we see the rise of authoritarian leaders, uh, the rise of misinformation, disinformation, not just in Pakistan, but also across South Asia, Sri Lanka, India, um, Bangladesh. Um, what is the role of the arts, the novel, um, to ensure that people don't follow blindly? Well, we can't ensure, we can only try. Um, but as a writer, I think the most important thing, and particularly as a fiction writer, is to uh, A, stand witness, record everything you're saying, seeing truthfully, because it's important to tell it like it is. Um, that's one thing, to be honest, to be authentic, and to be as fair as you can be. Uh, and second, I think, is to ridicule it. You know, because it's only when people are... The first thing that a dictator does when he comes to power is to, sh to go after the poets, to go after the novelists, to go after the cartoonists, to go after the stand-up comics, and they go after cartoonists and stand-up comics because they make fun of them. And when you make fun of a, a, a populist leader, you show people exactly how ridiculous he is or she is. And that makes... that that somehow or the other manages to uh, erode their power. Mm. And, and, and that is something they can't bear, which is why no jokes are allowed, no humor is allowed, uh, no satire is allowed, um, and, and poets are exiled, writers are imprisoned, because they fear us. Yeah. And so it is important that we understand our power and use it. All and right. use it wisely. Yeah. Fabulous. Thank you very much, Moni Mawson. This was lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much. The People's Platform. TV One, Sri Lanka's premier infotainment channel. In support of Sri Lanka's unique tradition of art and design, presents The Genius of the Place, the story of Jeffrey Baba, a film by Abdel Aziz. Exclusively aired in Sri Lanka on TV One. 11th of February at 5.30 p.m. Ratri Navayati Hatta Sirasa Tiliti Rain Bindu Atama Katichi Eva Garapu Samara Desh Pahana Pohaya I know Kalava Nava Eka Kalava Tino Eka Kalava Emu Kaddi Kumbu Deka Tiva Sarunayo Illwe System Change Eka Unne Nani Eka Adanda Minusu Inno Nathin IMF Again Naya Gatta Hai Kipau Arthika Kadaavati Eka Sanskutika Kadaavati Eka Sunu Nam Pasi Apu Kaagi Enda Naya Ta Ganni Ke Ena Prashti Thin Kari Kari Ena Kata Hari Gaini Maad Dila किया करी होया आगे नहीं इन्ना नाम पुरुषार्थ दे है दिलाती नहीं जीवित है इतने ही हाथे आगे ह्यूमन लाइफ के क्या मन्नत नहीं नहीं तो प्लान कर अपु जीवित है नेतिवेल आने हम और टम्बर तमांगे जीवित है ही प्रजातंत्र वादे तारीख जत्र आ गया किया पावर्टी ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी बुद्धि में यह संवाद है President urges everyone to unite in the pursuit of the nation-building dream. SJB stages walk out during President's policy statement in Parliament. Chandrika Bandara Nayaka to lead Podujana Eksat Peramuna. Multiple factions claim Election Commission has the right to call for elections and not the President. TV One TV for 
life. The People's Platform. Bali Kaur Jaswal is the author of Inheritance, which won the Sydney Morning Herald's Best Young Australian Novelist Award in 2014 and was adapted into a film at the Singapore International Festival of the Arts in 2017. Her second novel, Sugar Bread, was a finalist for the 2015 inaugural Epigram Books Fiction Prize and the 2018 Singapore Literature Prize. Her third novel, Erotic Stories for Punjabi Widows, was released internationally to critical acclaim in March 2017. Erotic Stories for Punjabi Widows was also picked by Reese Witherspoon's book club and the Girlie Book Club in 2018. Jaswal's novels have been translated into 15 languages. Jaswal has traveled widely to appear in international writers' festivals to conduct workshops and lectures on creative writing, pursuing an artistic career, the power of storytelling, global citizenship, and social justice advocacy through literature. She has also completed her PhD in South Asian diaspora writing. My next guest is Singaporean author of award-winning and critically acclaimed novels, including Inheritance, Sugar Bread and Erotic Stories for Punjabi Widows. I'm so pleased to welcome uh, Bali Kaur Jaswal. Good evening and welcome. Thank welcome you. to Sri Lanka. Welcome to Gaul. Thank you. Um, Bali, through your writing, you delve into the complexities of cultural identity. And um, identity and belonging are such nuanced uh, concepts um, to do justice to, not because, because they are not just geographical, but also uh, they are deeply rooted in memory, lived experiences, emotion. Um, how do you manage to navigate this? <laughs> um, I think I, I, I try to prioritize the character and the story first and thinking about what the character wants and what the character needs. So, you know, obviously there, there are tangible things that the character wants to achieve, you know, in that story and, and there are ways in which the character needs to grow. And often the way that the character will grow is by, you know, finding that sense of belonging and um, feeling included in their community somehow. My characters usually start from a point of being excluded and um, having to sort of find their way back um, or thinking that they have to find their way back but then realizing actually that communities need to expand their definition of what is acceptable and their definition of who, who gets to be included. Um, in most of your novels you advocate for women's agency through your storytelling and, and your, your characters are strong empowered women. How important is this portrayal um, for women who are reading this? I do want, I guess, I, I want readers, not just women, you know, all readers to see what's possible. Absolutely. I want um, readers to kind of um, follow the growth of a character who starts off not having much of a voice and then gains that voice. So I think it's very important to have those characters. They often don't start from a place of being empowered and they find empowerment, sometimes in surprising ways. Uh, your third novel, Erotic Stories for Punjabi uh, Widows, was critically uh, acclaimed. Uh, it's also deeply human. <laughs> Older Punjabi uh, Sikh widows speaking about their sex lives yeah. in, a, in a context where um, we are taught to shame ourselves where sex is so taboo yeah. so um how did you overcome these controversies and how was it received um, initially? The novel was very positively received. I would say even by members of the Punjabi diaspora, as far as I know, as far as what was fed back to me, uh, was very positive. Like I got a lot of um, uh, positive messages from people um, in India and also in the diaspora. That was exciting. Of course, there's going to be backlash and of course there are going to be people who are not um, you know, pleased about uh, women talking about, you know, sexuality and, and taboos. That's 
what the novel is about though. The novel is exactly about that discomfort. So it's interesting when there are people who are saying you shouldn't say this, that's exactly what the novel is trying to tackle and that's actually sort of proving the novel right in a way that, that, that there's this culture that needs to change and need to be more accepting. You believe in the power of storytelling, global citizenship and social justice advocacy through your storytelling uh, and literature. Uh, how does this work for you? Storytelling, you know, it's, it's, it's so much of our identity, so much of who, who we are and what we know about each other and ourselves is based on stories. You know, they, they, there's this sort of idea that, and it's very true, I think, that at the end of the day, all we have are stories, all we have are memories, all we have are, you know, the, the, um, the narratives about who we are, the places we came from, and how things have changed. Um, and, and I think that, you know, in a world that's, that's increasingly, in some ways, con very hyper-connected, but in also very isolated and very deeply disconnected, I think, you know, one thing that can, um, you know, move us towards a better understanding of global citizenship and more embracing of global citizenship is to listen to each other's stories, and especially the nuances in those stories. Uh, the protagonists in your novels are women who learn to empower themselves. Um, do you see a disconnect between your stories and women in real life the world over? First I did when I first started writing. I think I thought, you know, I, I want to create an ideal because I don't, I'm not seeing this enough in the world. And then since I've written, um, I've heard stories from a lot of women who, you know, who have come to tell me you know, ways in which my, my novels sort of resonate with them, ways in which like they rebelled in small ways or even in quite big ways, that they kind of chose their own path um, to happiness and, and um, you know, le left the community expectations behind um, and, and sort of created, yeah, cre created these, these, these identities for themselves that are fully kind of authentic uh, and, and not so much based in shame and taboo. So I think, I, I don't know if I'm, um, necessarily creating, uh, or, or, or I don't think it's that much of a stretch anymore. I think the, these stories absolutely exist and actually I'm discovering them, I'm, I'm finding them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's next in terms of um, taking on taboos? <laughs> um, I, I'm really interested in taboos around motherhood. Um, I've written mother characters, but mostly from the perspective of, of daughters and, right. and now that, you know, I've, I've, I'm a mother of two small children. Um, I'm. I. I think it, you can't win as a mom. I think you're always. You're always being shamed. It's damned if you do and damned if you don't. Uh, I think that the pressure that, that is put on mothers is enormous, and I'd like to see. Um, I'd like to kind of take a look at the intersections between being a mother and then being an immigrant or being a mother and being South Asian and being part of a diaspora because a lot of those double standards of motherhood are also placed on immigrants. What's the role that men have to play in this whole paradigm? They, you know, they, men um, can speak out against the patriarchy, men can um, challenge each other to think, you know, differently of women. They can challenge each other to stop the policing of women and to and to um, sort of examine their their views and the ways in which perhaps they um, hold women back. Yeah, so I, th I think there's a lot that men can do. And actually, I've gotten a lot of responses from men. Uh, in particular, uh, I've gotten a few messages from Punjabi men who have written to me to say that they actually um, found themselves reflecting on their relationships with their sisters and their female cousins and their mother is a little bit different after reading my novel erotic stories for Punjabi widows because they hadn't really thought of them as wanting more than what they were given. Yeah, so I, 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 that's a huge win for me. I think yeah. that, that's, exactly, that's exactly why I write. All right, yeah. fabulous. <laughs> Bali Kaur Jaswal, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Plusne aro puja ke na paatala nahi kawa office ke na basic. Varadi karala idu passe varadi hada ke na jeevite patangat tuai net. Hi na vitara tibra baya bi. Apni hamu hi na ko hada kar gana. Manusse ette hi na kitu kar gana bari no. Ek tamangge varadi ke rada mai samaj manusse rengile dik karan. Abe me vila ve puja ke ila ke abima. Yantang kurlo ke hi ta hadi ke na avi tarai. Me manusse abe aye mat de hi ta kadala bindala de. नील पबलू अद रात्री नवेट सिरस टिली तिरेंड